You thought you knew what was gonna happen? Uh-uh. Airbend this table over here. Look. <laughs> Boom. And, well, you know, you know what else? I mean, I'm gonna waterbend this, uh, this dust off the table. Spoos, spoos. Oh my gosh. And I'm gonna sit down. Now, this is normally the part where I'd say this is normally the part, as I mean in the last video, where I'd say something about the Lego sets being retired, but no. Lego had a chance of making a new one in Lego Ideas, but they didn't. So, I watched Avatar The Last Airbender, Avatar The Last Airbender, and Legend of Korra. Now, two of those aren't true, uh, but they will be soon. So, I want to watch the whole Avatar collection, but I feel like if I wait to talk about them all in one video, then I might forget stuff about the earlier ones. So, I'm going to do this series by series. I just finished Avatar about two hours ago. I went on a run, but you know. I also need to get ready for this. Don't ask how long the arrow took, because I will tell you two minutes, and um, then you're going to say I have a little um, projection problem. But that's not true. So, first of all, what was my timeline of Avatar The Last Airbender? Well, whenever day I film the Stranger Things video, I'll put a chart on screen. I probably won't, but, you know. Uh, I'll just say this. Um, and it was from then until today, the 25th. I started season three about three days ago, and the rest, I don't know. But let's talk about season one. I mean, this video is not, this is not as structured as Stranger Things, but I want to watch the movie tonight so I can talk about it tomorrow. And it's seven. I have an hour until it gets dark in my room. So I gotta go. Also, my water's empty, so that's great. Wee woo! Wee woo! Spoiler! Wee woo! Wee woo! Spoiler! If you choose to watch this, you are not cool. You are a big stinky dum dum. Wee woo! Wee woo! Spoiler! But season one, we start off with the boy in the iceberg thing. It was it was a good start, you know. I was worried at first, like the first three minutes. I was no, I didn't like it. I mean, I could definitely tell it was anime inspired, though. I mean, that didn't deter me, but I just noticed that, and I noticed that more as the series went on. But I mean, once Aang came out of the iceberg, everything started to go well. I mean, Sokka. I mean, he had a rough start, and I mean, we'll talk about that more. Like, I mean, that was one of the main deterrents. He was very annoying. But, I mean, the water bending that intrigued me. I mean, the intro, that was... I was going to watch the whole thing just for the... Three, um, Fire Nation ships, that, that was going to keep me the whole series, no matter how bad I thought it was. Luckily, it wasn't, but, I mean, just that intro, I, I mean, it was great. So, Boy in the Iceberg, I mean, then we meet, um, you know, um, Zuko. I mean, he was, he intrigued me from the start. I mean, I heard about him in Iroh, and, like, I, can't, I knew as I was going into this, I saw a video about it, not not explicitly, but it was mentioned, and I mean, I knew what was going to happen, but man, they're my favorite characters. Again, this isn't the characters portion, we talk about that after the seasons, but just, and then the invasion, um, and then Ink came to stop, I mean, that was great, he, he lets himself get captured, and then uh, Sokka and uh, Katara, they go back on Appa. Uh, and that that was great. Now, th this um was the start of the series. It was a two part episode directed by Dave Filoni, so I, I really liked it. And then this was where it started to change a bit. Now this is where them being nomadic started episode to episode. It it was a really interesting show for me because it was both the individual episode type thing where it's like okay. Um, we do this thing one episode, and yes, it leads to a big goal, so that type of show, but it's not, it was a mix of both a season goal and a overall goal, which, goal, which I don't normally see, it's either the episodic, it's the season goal, or the complete goal, but this was a, this was a mix of all three, you had your episode things, ones that didn't matter, um, but they still all took you, they all furthered, um, 
st the story um, to take you to the season goal, which is he learns this. Um, they normally have a big fight at the end of the season. But then, you know, it, you watch end of season one and go on to season two, and there's not much of a difference between, you know, that you get a new character like um, the sister, whose name I forgot, um, Azula. But, you know, it was interesting how they laid it out, but let's get back to it. I mean, a lot of the season one episodes, I mean, I don't want to say they're forgettable. They were really good, but, you know, it, not much happened. I mean, meeting all the different tribes, the Kazuki warriors, I think, um, that was nice. I mean, I thought, like, looking at it, that would be one of the more, um, bad episodes, like, yeah, oh, girls can fight, I mean, I thought it'd be a bit heavy-handed, but they handled it really well. Now, if there's one episode in season one I didn't like, um, it, it's not that I didn't like the whole thing, it was the, the, um, fortune teller episode. This, um, is a trend I see throughout most of the series. I mean, the crushing thing, um, between Aang and Katara, it's, it works most of the time, but except when you're just be you're just being a jerk, I mean, just doing the weird stuff. I mean, Sokka, I screw you, Sokka, in this episode. I mean, he gives horrible advice, and it's just like when you're giving horrible advice and kind of like when he's like just ignoring her. And it, I hate the romance stuff when it's tacky and it makes you feel uncomfortable, and it's like, oh my God, stop this. And it's like, I'm, I'm fine with it most of the time. But when it's just bad stuff, one part in season three, I'll tell you about it. That made me mad. The majority of this episode I liked, but those four minutes of the tacky romance. And I mean, not even all the romance in this episode was bad. When Katara was like asking um, who, who she'll marry. Um, and then like later in the episode, um, not even knowing, dang it, Sokka was like, Aang's a powerful bender. That was nice. It would, it might just be nothing, but it gave you something to think about. It wasn't just being trying to impress them in the weirdest ways. Sokka knows best about dating, even though he's only kissed his grandma. The stuff that feels like you'd see in a sitcom, but this is a series where episodes have have um, consequences. What happens in this episode leads to next episode. Made me mad. Um, season one, though, and the other notable episodes. I mean, at first, the one at the Northern Air Temple, I think, I really didn't like where they were all modernizing it, and I thought, I thought it was gonna be like some, um, some where it's like, um, you should learn that the future is only good, and it's like, or only the past, it, but it was, it wasn't all about that, I mean, he accepted it, and I thought when, uh, the boy was like, oh, and you open the door, and he does, it's like, ha 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 ha. I'm the bad guy. You open this room that has all the the valuable airbender stuff, and I'm gonna be evil. But no, it was where the tinker was doing his stuff. So I mean, that was a good episode. Uh, I mean, again, the Iro stuff and the um, Zuko stuff. It's it's always good. I mean, the Admiral Zhao. He was good. I mean, he's a bit of a bland villain, but I mean. He was a good one. I mean, seeing the rivalry between him and Zuko throughout the season, starting with uh, Agni Kai and, oh, another episode, the one where um, they were breaking out of prison. Um, Katara accidentally got the boy imprisoned, and then sh they break out. I think it's episode six. That that was really good. I mean, it had Admiral Luke Dodd uh, from Star Wars The Clone Wars as the warden. I loved that. Um, the episode with Jet, I mean, I didn't like him. I know that's the point, but the episode was good, and I'm just, I liked him more in later seasons. Pip Squeak really sounds like the kid Spin from Lab Rats. He's not, but, I mean, that's just something. I liked the concept of it, um, what they were doing, but, like, how Jet is, like, um, pure elitist, basically Saw Gerrera from Star Wars. Now, I mean, I'm sure I could keep talking for days. Let's talk about the two-part finale in the Northern Water Temple. The episode where he learns fire. 
good. We'll talk about that more later, though. Um, so, now, they're at the Northern Water Temple, which has been the season goal, which I was talking about earlier. They've come, and they finally learned water. I mean, everything's great. It starts off that, um, the teacher, I mean, he's really strict, but... I mean, he won't teach guitar, and then they basically have a water Agni Kai duel, and then, I mean, that impresses the teacher enough to, you know, teach her, um, which, that was nice. Um, Aang was being a bit childish here, a bit too childish in my opinion, but, you know, it's fine. You have Sokka, and I'll just call her the Water God, because I don't remember her name. I mean, that... You know what I said about Sokka earlier and giving bad advice? I mean, this was really nice and really sincere. I liked it. Um, it felt nice. Um, and then the whole looming invasion from Admiral Zhao, like that, the, um, Zuko, um, being blown up by the pirates and then hiding. It showed you what a good Uncle Iroh was and makes Season 2 feel even more worse. Um, getting to that, uh, and yeah, this was a great finale, we'll just talk about the invasion right now, I mean, you have, um, just the ships coming and then the night, and then you have Zuko sneaking in, and I mean, throughout the show, you don't learn to hate Zuko, you don't think of him as a villain, but just a main character that, he's, he's kind of his own protagonist throughout the whole show, once you learn his backstory, um, yeah, the, the invasion part, that was well done, and then when Aang goes to the spirit world for the second time, the face dealer, they said they were going to encounter it again in season three. Again, we'll talk about that. Well, they didn't say they encounter it again, but, um, he does say that here. I mean, that's an interesting villain. Not villain, but spirit. I'd love to see more of that guy. Um, I'll talk about that in a separate video, just... How I'd love to see the lore expanded. Um, wait on that. I'll probably make it one day. Um, and then when Zuko captures him and they're in the snow. Oh, oh, let's backtrack a bit. Backtrack time. The episode where Zuko breaks Aang out of prison. That was really good. Um, as the blue mask guy. You know, he did it for himself at the time. But, you know, the whole... Aang saving him then, and it's like, maybe one, we could have been friends. I mean, I loved that. Okay, let's go back. So now they're in the cave, and they're cold. And I mean, it's Zuko's not being mean to him. This is for his honor. He, he doesn't have anything against the Avatar, I don't think. He doesn't have anything personally against Aang. And like, I really think if it wasn't for the honor, they could have been friends. And if he wasn't fighting against Fire Nation, they really could have been friends at this point. Um, but, like, they, they, they had respect for each other, I mean, Aang, Aang either brought him back, or just, uh, some, they did some, uh, and then when Admiral Zhao killed the fish, I, that was, that was deep, um, and then the whole water girl, um, saying that, you know, I, I'll sacrifice myself, Here's one thing I don't like about that, is that she, um, they have three episodes in the Northern Water Tribe, the first one, and then the two parts, I would have much rather that was said in the first episode, I know it wouldn't made as much sense character-wise, but then it just feels like they threw it in, and I'm pretty sure they even did it in the second episode, um, and I don't know, I feel like it was a bit rushed to say that, and then not even 20, 30 minutes later story-wise, um, but, I mean, it was a good sacrifice, and, I mean, it really affected Sokka later on. So, season one finale, it was really good. And then, when at Aang was the big water man, it was like, <laughs> like on the bang, bang. I, I really liked that. And then, we end the season with Azula being sent out because, um, Fire Lord's like, I would all, he's a big stupid leader, and he's a traitor, and, um, my son can't do anything. Uh, also, he, um, the Fire Lord, he was voiced by Mark Hamill. Am I just the only person to 
Didn't you realize that? I mean, I searched up the cast list earlier because I don't know. I've There's so many voices that sound familiar, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> so I see the final episode, and I'm like, I kind of hear it. But I just thought that was cool. So season one, it was great. But the next ones are, you know, here's where it is. I mean, I'm tall, but it's taller than me. That's saying something. But then the next one. Season two, I mean, this one, the first five-ish episodes, I don't really remember um, exactly what's happening. Uh, you have Iroh and Zuko. They're, they're traveling. And, I mean, this is something you see throughout season two where... They're realizing that, you know, fire, well, people just blankly think that Fire Nation's bad, whether that's a good thing or not. It's their Fire Nation, okay, they're horrible people, and I mean, they've done, um, Zuko's done horrible stuff, and I mean, it's, it's a big part of his arc, but we'll leave that there to the side. You have Azula now, and I mean, she's, um, a very interesting character, I mean, she has all the power, She's threatening and just basically scary. Um, I mean, the lightning, that came out of nowhere. Um, and, I mean, the, the all the different types of bending, I'll get to that maybe not this video, maybe another one. I'm not sure, but I that's probably going to take me a while to talk about. Um, so now it starts off the, epi um, the season with they're going to the Earth Kingdom town where um, the guy's basically attacking them, be or Aang, because they want him to be, um, they want him to become the Avatar State, I think that's what it's called, where he's blue and glowy, um, and I, that was, it was a fine episode, but I didn't really care. Um, there was the one where um, he, it was like the trial episode where he was on, tr um, Aang was on trial because one of the past Avatar's Kyoshi, um, if I, they're the Kyoshi Wars, I might have said something different earlier, but Avatar Kyoshi killed the town's leader. I mean, that was a fine episode. Um, it had the funny joke of, like, the, um, inmates, they were all, um, standing in a circle with Aang, just talking about how he'll get Katara one day, and I liked that. But, I mean, it was a, it was one episode. The day where they go to the Cape Town with Aang's friend from season one. I didn't talk about him. Another good episode, but we're past season one. He's kind of a crazy old Earth Kingdom leader where they go there, and that's where they first meet Azula because she's assembling a team of her old elite friends. So she's going there to get May. Um, and they fight, and then they leave. Since I'm talking about Azula and this, I want to say that it wasn't originally that Iroh and Zuko were going to flee, but, you know, um, Azula came and was like, Brother, Father wants you back. He feels so bad. And, you know, they start coming, and then one of the guards says, Okay, we need prisoners are secure. And um, Zuko hears him, he's like, Prisoners. And then they fight, and now they're they're outlaws because the Fire Nation wanted him uh, in prison for some reason because he's a bigger threat to the Fire Nation or something than helping. I'll talk about that in season three, but whatever. Um, that's just something I want to mention. So now uh, Azula's got her team of Tai Li, who can basically knock someone out, stop their water bending. You have May, who can shoot spiky things, and Azula, who, who has unlimited power! Great Palpatine impression. Anyway, so, yeah, that's happening. I'm not sure how many episodes later, but basically, um, there's a WWE episode, and I know, Avatar, right? But, listen to me, it's fine. So, he's really starting to look, Aang is really starting to look for earthbender teacher now so um they're in this town and they go to a school and they hear like an earthbending school because they get a coupon it, the school sucks but they get they hear about this um earthbending tournament which they go to and it's basically just wwe of earthbenders it's like staged 
Um, there's someone called the Boulder. I found that very funny. Get it? The Boulder. Ayo! Dwayne the Boulder. Johnston, that's me. If I was an earthbender, that'd be my name. Uh, yeah. Maybe Gabe. Don't think about it too hard. But then, one girl who comes out and basically beats them up, it's like, you come out and, like, the champion of the last one just comes and fights and tops the champion. She's a girl who's blind, um, but because, but can, like, feel the vibrations. She's basically a bat. And, like, she's the most powerful earthbender. Aang sees her, and he just feels that she's going to be the teacher. So she he follows her home and, you know, um, basically throughout the episode convinces her to um, come be her t his teacher. And she runs away from home at the end. And, I mean, the parents put a bounty on it, but it's nothing much. I mean, it's a little bit of the finale, but, I mean, it's really nothing at all that there's a bounty on her. So now they're going. Now we get to one of the best episodes of all time, Zuko alone. Um, uh, Zuko's been stealing from towns, and it's Iroh didn't really like that. And at, basically, um, Zuko's like, we don't have anything to more to gain from traveling together. Well, let me try a better impression. We don't have, we don't, we don't have anything more to gain from traveling together, Uncle. Um. So then he goes on his own trip. I kind of tracking down Azula. Kind of tracking down the Avatar. Um. I'm not sure which one. I don't. I'm not sure if they really said. Anyways, what he does is, um, he's traveling and he runs into this town. It has um Earth Nation warriors except they just basically wear costumes and assault the citizens um he meets this one kid and he, the kid's family takes him in his the kid's brother went to war and like the kid and um zuko were really bonding like in the middle of the night zuko comes out because the kid takes his swords and like teaches him how to fight with them and he's the kid's like you really remind me of my brother he'd really like you and it's all heartwarming but then the guards come and uh, take away the sun. Um, there's more reasons why, but I'm, I, that's just a few more seconds of explaining. And I've got 40 minutes left. So, yeah, the guards come, they take him, and Zuko's about to leave, but the mother's like, No, you gotta come help my son. I don't really know you, and I know. And she does say that, and I'm not joking. But please help. So Zuko goes and frees the kid, but the guards, they start beating him up. And, you know, he's about to get really hurt, so what does he do? He firebends and beats them up, and he, and then the kid, who, um, and the whole town, really, who, who thought he was a hero five minutes ago, now that he's a firebender, they hate him. The kid's like, I hate you! And, like, it's really sad because, you know, Nizuko was being nice. He didn't do anything wrong here. He was defending the town, yet because he's firebender, that's stigma against them. It's no. And he also, you understand it because, you know, how many of these people have lost their family to firebenders? How many people are off fighting the war? You understand, but also, it shows the stigma, and it also shows the bad of the war to Zuko. So it's great for the story. Now, um, they go to a swamp and fight, meet a talking tree, and someone who can bend vines next. Um, they go out to the desert because they find out that there's this library that has information on everything in the world. So they go there with this archaeologist guy. Um, he's uh, actually a professor at the University of Boston today, but that's fine. So they go out and basically to the library. It's in the middle of the desert. And they go down, basically find out that an eclipse is coming. And when there's a solar eclipse, that the Fire Nation people can't firebend. So they find out what that is. But then the kind of keeper of the library, he's like a giant owl. He's like, you said you want going to use this information for bad reasons. And then he starts kind of trying to kill them and starting to sink the temple. So Toph is holding up the temple. And I mean, she can't really see well in the sand because it's not hard and solid like a rock. And I mean... 
your guitar just sends the vibrations of that. So some sand benders, uh, another weird type of bender, comes up and steals the Appa, kidnaps them. So by the time that she either lets the friends die or Appa get kidnapped, and obviously she saves the friends, but then this leads on to the next episode where it's like them walking in without water in the desert and uh, Zoy Asaka, he drinks cactus juice and he's all funny this episode because he's high. Ha ha ha. Um, and, you know, he's saying out for Aang and he's kind of getting mad. And they find the sandbenders who do this. And he goes full on Avatar form, which, like, he doesn't like doing Avatar form anymore because he sees how dangerous it is and how he's he can hurt people and he doesn't like that um, because of what his monks taught up him. Monks, I should say. His air monks. And, you know, so he finds them and he finds out that Appa's in Ba Sing Se. So they go to Ba Sing Se and you know who's in Ba Sing Se. Okay, sorry, sorry, let's backtrack, backtrack a bit. Bit. Oh. Um, in an episode, basically the first one with Toph, it's after Zuko alone. Um, Toph and Katara are kind of fighting, and at some point, Toph runs away. She meets Iroh, who's kind of following Zuko, and, um, they have a talk, and it both leads them to, um, like, just, Iroh realizes what's important, uh, Toph realizes what's important, they go, and then, uh, Agula's tracking down, um, the Avatar because Appa's shedding, and, you know, because of that, um, they've been followed and they can't stop. So, um, it basically ends with everyone, I mean, Zuko's there, um, Azula's there, and then the Avatar crew's there, and they're all fighting, um, and now it's Zuko and Iroh together again. Um, they all gang up on Azula and she disappears. Remember this, there's gonna be a funny joke about it later in the video. I'll, I'm promising you that. If I'm not funny, then whatever. Um, y you gotta stay funny, because I am. So, um, now everyone's heading to Bossing Say, to Bossing Say, to Bossing Say. They are all heading to Bossing Say, yay, the day, day, day. Woo! So, Azula's already, they get to Bossing Say after going through this pass with some, well, they go through a love cave, um, where you need to get through with love, or like ground moles, um, and they don't have. Sorry, the love cave was very far before they did have Appa. Uh, Aang and Katara might have needed to kiss to get out. We're not sure. It might have just been because the torches are out. We're not sure that happened earlier. But they met these, um, these, um, not immigrants, but basically people who have been hurt by the war and are traveling. I'm not sure what the word is because I forgot. They're pregnant and they go through this dragon pass with a key. Um, the head Kyoshi warrior, which, I mean, they're, her and Sokka kind of had a thing. And in this episode, Sokka's, I mean, this is a good Sokka love thing, where it's like, sh he feels bad about being with her because, you know, um, the moon girl. But also, I mean, he's super overprotective of her, like, watch your step, watch this, watch this, because, you know, he couldn't protect his last one, so it's like, this duality, um, and we see the Kyoshi warriors here, but then, um, so they cross this super dangerous path, they get to Ba Sing Se, but when they're there, they realize that Azula has a drill, and it's a drilling into Ba Sing Se. She, basically, they defeat Azula in this way, and then Azula's leaving, but this is super future episode, like, by the head, but it's flashback, but I'll say it here anyway. She kidnaps the Kyoshi warriors, and Zuko, um, and his father there in Bossing say, so, this is a big city town, a lot of rules, and as we learn to find out in the next, like, five episodes, there's a long time in Bossing say, like, six or seven, um, basically, it's controlled by this guy who's kind of manipulating the president, he, he He's, like, in charge of warfare, so there's the Dai Li who's keeping control of the city, making sure no one knows about the war, um, brainwashing citizens, and, I mean, this is gonna be hard to go through, but, um, basically, uh, they're, they're here to find Appa, 
Zuko and Iroh, they're here to start a new YA. Um, Iroh start, and Zuko starts working at a tea shop. Eventually, they get their own one later on. Um, the crew, they're looking for Oppen, trying to fight the injustice, but then um, they're starting to be watched, and then there's this episode where it's like basically the stories of Bossing Say. It shows a bunch of things going on. I mean, most of them are minor, but there are, like, two or three really good ones. There's, um, and I was just going to talk about them, because the stories in the most part aren't that important to the overall series. Um, there's Aang's, which is him, uh, it's him making an animal zoo, and I mean, I just like that one. It was simple, but I liked it. You had Iros, who was, um, it was the day, it was basically him living in Bossing Say. And, you know, sh walking around just being a good person, you know, even though he's fire nation. He's helping crooks and, like, not helping them raw, but he's, like, being nice to them. And he's, uh, like, you deserve better than this and kind of talks him through it. And then at the end of the episode, uh, he has a little funeral because it's, like, the five-year anniversary. It's some anniversary of his son's death and maybe his birthday. Um, and that, that got me crying. Uh, I loved that scene so much. Um, and then Zuko, um, you see who my favorite characters are? Go, I will go here. Um, anyways, they are, um, Zuko, he, some girl is crushing on him, so Iroh basically says you should go out. And I mean, Zuko's being really nice. Um, I don't think he loves her. I mean, especially because when she wants to kiss, he's like, no, I can't do this. But he had a good time, whether as a friend or girlfriend. I mean, it was just a good episode. So now this last one, basically, I'm probably skipping a bunch of bossing say stuff. But anyways, um, Appa's captured, and they find the place where it is because Jet, who's here, is um, brainwashed, and they say, you should get out of here, but then... His friends are like, wait, what are you doing? And it's like, there's confusion because they're both not lying because Toph can tell when people are lying. So it's like, they realize, oh, he's been brainwashed because he was captured by the Dai Li. So then they go to this place where Appa was and they fight him and they capture the, or at least free Appa and get away. And then in the next episode, they tell the king what's happening and basically he traps the Dai Li. Now, in this next, next episode, which we're talking about, um, now that Appa's back, they realize that there's a note, which is saying that, um, it's from a guru, which I think is funny. Guru, get it, tech guru, oh my gosh, that's probably an actual word, just, not just a tech guru, but I, I'm still calling it that's funny. So, he goes, um, uh, Avatar goes to train with this guy to learn how to master the avatar state and be able to control himself in it, go in what he wants. He learns to unlock all these different, um, Shotzi's or something like that, um, where it, like, lets the energy flow through him, um, but the last one is to detach yourself from everything worldly, which means he needs to lose his, basically, not kill Katara, but just stop caring about her, and he's like, I can't do it. But, um, also, Sokka's with his dad, um, because they found each other, because he got a message on where he is, and, um, before they were leaving, they heard that the Kyotsu warriors are coming, um, but, you know, since that's, um, a Zula and her team, that's bad, but they don't realize it until it's too late. Katara's staying behind and helping to plan the Black Sun ambush, but since, again, Kyotsu warriors, she hears about that. Basically, um, uh, Azula, she comes, takes control of the Dai Li, or not, the, yeah, whatever the, um, warriors of Ba Sing Se are, takes control of them, um, destroys the government of Ba Sing Se, uh, captures Katara, captures, um, uh, captures, um, what's his name, Ponytail, Zoku, Zuko, and, you know, Zuko and Katara, they're in prison together, and they're, they're bonding, not in a romantic way, I don't think, but, like, you know, they're realizing that they're not as bad, especially 
Katara to Zuko. And I mean, remember this because it's going to be important for season three. But then Aang and Iroh, they're back with Sokka. And they realize what's happening. They free them. And then uh, Azula comes and basically tells um, Zuko that you come with me. You go with daddy. You go with daddy, boy. You can come back to Fire Nation. You you can be my homie. You can be my homie, bro. And he's like, do I have to join Team Avatar or Team Fire Nation? And he chooses Team Fire Nation. Betrays his uncle, Aoi. I, that's the, I, I hated him in this episode. It's Iroh and then Zo Zuko. I mean, Iroh's the best. Zuko's also the best. But Iroh's... Iroh's this is I wrote this is Zuko and that hurt but you know it was good to show so um Aang tries to unlock his seventh chakra that's what it's called um and then get his avatar power but Azula shoots her down and then basically with the help of Uncle Iroh um they all leave and like Aang's dead he's dead but Katara heals him with spirit water from the lake in, in the season one, which has like special properties. So she uses it all up to heal him. And that's season two, baby. I love it. It was great. It was amazing. Um, I mean, there were some rocky parts, but I mean, it doesn't have bad episodes like season one or season three. The, the two episodes that I didn't like in each one, which you're going to see when we talk about season three. There correlation but yeah anyways it was really good i mean you see a lot of growth for zuko and just all the characters talk great addition to the cast um and i mean no it was great so now we're on to season three baby the fire chapter yes the or i mean the, the fire book the book of fire yeah, the seasons are called books, and episodes are called chapters. I wonder where Dave Filoni got the idea. Am I right? Oh, Mandalorian's copying from Avatar. Oh, that hurts so much. Now, um, back to the video. Uh, let's talk about season three. So, Aang's very injured, and um, basically episode one is showing Zuko adjust to his new life in Fire Nation, and Aang um, realizing that, like, he needs to deal with the fact that he's dead. And, I mean, he failed. And no one knows he exists. And that's that's the whole first episode. Um, episode two. I mean, this one, I like the second half. The first half, not so much. Um, they were stealing clothes. Um, so they could dress up and blend in with the Fire Nation people. Because they're living in the Fire Nation in this uh, season, so, um, he w Aang takes a school uniform, and then some guards say, alright, you're bad, by playing hooky, and they take him to school, and, um, I don't like the school part, I mean, it, it was just, it, it wasn't bad as in the romance, but I mean, it just, I didn't like it, it I mean, that bully kid, uh, but then, um, he's realizing, like, okay, I can't stay here any longer, because they're on to me, but I gotta teach these kids some freedom. So he hosts a dance party. And again, this is where you get the nice little romance stuff. Him and Katara are dancing to like show all the kids how to do it because they don't really know how to dance. And I mean, this is nice. It doesn't feel like he's being a jerk. It just, it feels nice for the story. I mean, it, it, get, it feeds a bit into it, I mean, but it also doesn't. And it just, it doesn't hurt to have stuff like this where it's not over the top. It just felt nice. You know what Aang's intentions were, but it's also not uh, like I'm being a jerk. So that's this one. There's another one where they go to this little town and Katara um, uh, uses her powers to help the people um, and like dresses up as a god. And then basically, yeah, that's the whole episode. Um, I don't remember all of the Fire Nation ones. There was one where they went to like a fire festival or something. I don't remember, but um, let's just skip to episode five, The Beach. Maybe my favorite episode um, because 
It's basically Zuko, his girlfriend, which is May, Kylene, which is the most anime-looking girl in the whole show, and then Azula. They're on this beach because his father's like, I need to have a private meeting. Get the f*** out of here. So um, it's, it's fine for the most part. I mean, for the most part, it's just a typical episode. But why this is the best episode ever, I mean... Azula, she's kind of crushing on this one boy. She says the funniest joke I think I've ever heard. I was laughing for about 40, 50 seconds. It was hilarious. Uh, I'm, I'm going to put it on screen right now. And I might need a screen record. I'm not sure. But. So I can't screen record and it shows up better on my tablet. But here we go, my folks. was hilarious and this that's why episode five the beach is the best episode ever i'm sorry if, if any other episode had this joke i would have given it to them but no that was hilarious um so basically this all leads to the invasion of black sun uh i mean i'm not remembering all these episodes probably because i saw them all in one day but, you know, it, it was fine. Um, you're starting to see that Zuko isn't living this perfect life. He thought he would, but okay. Now we're at the Day of Black Sun. It's a two-parter. I mean, these two-parters, they're great. I, I just want to say that. If it's a two-parter, it's good. Just just, just understand that. If, if you see part one in the title, you're like, okay, this is going to be good. Now, um, this one is, okay. So let's let's backtrack a little, little bit. Episode before this. If this episode where Aang's like, oh no, I'm having bad dreams because I'm scared. So then basically by the end, he do doesn't sleep. He he just doesn't sleep one night. And then he's having these weird hallucinations. That that's not how it worked. If it was like two nights, three, sure. But he didn't sleep one night. And. Yeah, I, I didn't like that episode. I mean, you know, I won't say it's the worst one, but that little kiss thing where he did the Pugs Bunny lip and it was a hallucination. I'm not mad that was a hallucination. I'm mad I had to see that with my own eyes. This isn't Deadpool comics. You don't need to see those Bugs Bunny lips. I hate Bugs Bunny lips. They're not funny. Okay, I only have 20 minutes. Let's hurry this up. So, Invasion of Black Sun. Um, all of the past allies, whether it's the kid in the wheelchair from the Northern Air Temple, the Swamp Benders, um, the, the guy from the prison episode, um, Katara's dad, they're all there, and it's, and it's this great invasion, it's super well planned out, um, they go there, but, um, and it's, it's going swimmingly, they're, they're in a submarine, so they're going swimmingly underwater, I'm so, I'm very funny, um, the invasion's going great, and, you know, you feel like, wait, what's gonna happen? I, I knew it wasn't gonna be, because we were only at episode 10, but I also knew that, okay, this is this is good. Um, but I wasn't sure what's gonna happen. This is the next 10 episode rebuilding, but there needs to be a little bit more, because I felt, I felt like Zuko had to be good by the end, um, because that just felt right for his arc. I mean, that's not something I heard about, but I mean, it, it just felt right for his arc. Also, Iroh, he's been in prison, and he's been, like, training, like, getting buff, so he's breaking out right now during the Black Sun. Um, but, okay, so, the Fire Lord's not in his palace. That's why they're doing this during Black Sun, because no firebenders, they can go in his palace, and can just easily defeat him. They realize there's an underground bunker. Um, they go there. They find Azula. And basically, she's having a fight because she has the Dai Li protecting her, um, like the Earthbender people. And, you know, then she's like t saying that to Sokka that, oh my gosh, have you met my favorite prisoner? She's, she's like, oh no, Sokka, uh, please come for me. Basically, um, the girl in the Yoshi Warriors, the main one that he kind of has things for now. And now it's like, really? 
thing for like ro romance, even though it wasn't kind of like that last episode. Maybe it was just because you know they were um he was still a bit hurt about the moon god, but anyways, at the same time. Um, Zuko saying to his dad, basically saying, screw the Fire Nation. I mean, I've realized my destiny is to help train the Avatar, but, um, by the end, uh, everyone's clean. It's just the Avatar's group and then basically kids from the invasion, they all leave and then Zoku, Zuko follows and Iroh's free, but the Iron Nation's um, not the Fire Nation, the Fire Lord, Mark Hamill, is still, um, in power. So, so now Zuko's trying to gain their trust, um, and basically he does. I'm not going to talk about Combustion Man, uh, just because I'm not. Okay. So, yeah, that's happened. And, okay. Um, now they're training to learn. They, they go find... Um, these ancient firebenders who learn from dragons, and basically the dragons spin a circle around them, and they're like, oh, I know how to firebend now. And basically, uh, this takes them up to uh, training days. I mean, there, there's this joke where everyone goes on a life-changing journey with um, Zuko, and I mean, that's kind of true, uh, but basically, now Zuko goes on a trip with Sokka to free his father um, at this top secret prison at Chuparo again. Like I said, great. Um, so at, they go to the prison, and although his father's not there, um, the Kyoshi warrior girl um, is there, and I mean, they're, they're, they're loving it. Um, or they should say each other, haha. Um, this guy from prison comes and, like, I want to join. And then basically, they find out that a new shipment's coming. Um, of people before they leave the prison, so it's like, okay, um, I'm going to, I'm going to wait and see the father, but then the guy who comes gets captured, and, um, Zuko, um, it, like, kind of gave himself up. We find out that the warden is his girlfriend's uncle, um, so the father comes, um, uh, Sokka's father comes, I should say, and then what happens is that, uh, they, they make a new plan to break out, and, um, May comes to visit Zuko, and it's like, you can tell that she actually cares for him now, like, they really care for each other, uh, we know Zuko only broke up with her to protect her because he didn't want her name getting dragged through the mud just because he knew it was his destiny to help the Avatar. And basically, they're escaping, but then Azula comes and um, with uh, the Tai Li. And basically, she's about to kill Zuko and Sokka and the uh, Kyoshi warrior and the dad. But then Mei starts fighting and is like, no, no, you, you ain't doing this, sis. And then also Tai Li helps. So they're both traitors. This is very important. Katara goes on a mission where, um, with Zuko where they find the guy who killed her dad. Killed her mom, I should say. It was fine. But now we get to the worst episode of the show. Maybe. I mean, those past two that I've said are bad. Or at least this other season three one uh, that I said was bad with uh, not being able to sleep. This one is completely filler, completely pointless, and has some horrible scenes. Uh, so basically, it is that there's a play going on of them. It, it's super accurate to what happened, by the way, all the information. Where did you get this? Like, when, even stuff that's private, where it's only the three of them. So it's like, first of all, they say, oh, no, he's just been traveling and asked a lot of people. You don't know all this stuff uh, in, in the private stuff. Uh, especially if you're Fire Nation, because it's like, oh, hey, I'm a Fire Lord at the end. Um, but it's basically, it's that, it, the character, it's representation of the characters that are a bit overborn, but, you know, still represent them. Um, and, um, at one point, at, basically when they get to the end of season two in the play, and it's like, um, 
Zoki, Zuko and Katara, they're in the cave trapped together. It's like, um, they have a dance and it's like, um, Zuko's like, I see the Avatar's girl. And he's like, nah, he's my younger brother. Um, and like, that, um, Aang gets really mad and he kind of leaves. One more thing, Invasion of Black Sun, not dream sequence, not, um, anything like that. Um, right before he leaves, Aang leaves into battle, he gives Katara a kiss and then it flies away. You don't really hear it talked about at all. It's, um, but in this episode, they come back to it and it's like, um, Katara comes and follows him out and it's like, what's wrong? And it's, Katara comes and follows him out and it's like, what's wrong? And it's like, did you mean what you said? And she's like, no, that's the way. But it's like, and he's like, we kissed! Didn't you know? I thought that meant we were going to be together after that. And she's like, I don't know. Aang. I'm just so confused right now. We're in the middle of the war. This is the death time. So, Aang, I, this is one of the worst things that you can do. She's like, she's confused. She doesn't know what to do. He just goes up and kisses her. What the actual F? That is such a jerk move. Don't, don't do that. And, and then, like, the play ends with, um, everyone being defeated, and, like, the Fire Nation wins, and everyone's, like, kind of scared. So that's the end of this episode. The next one is, like, okay, it's three days before the so um, Sozin's Comet, which is basically, it's a day where Fire Nation has unlimited power, and basically are super strong. It's the day in the past where the past Fire Nation, 100 years ago, destroyed all of the airbenders, every single one of them except Aang, of course. Um, but uh, now what was happening was that um, they, they weren't planning to do this, but um, Zuko says that, you know, this is three days away, um, I thought you were going to do this, and basically says, he's going to burn down the whole Earth Kingdom on this day, because he has all this power for a day. I mean, I didn't really understand it until he explained it. It's like, it's a full day of this, like, the, um, black sun. I thought it was like, you step in it where the comet is or something, and you just get, um, you get the power forever. So I guess this is, this is a bit more fair. So, um, Aang is having problems because he doesn't want to kill all his, um, monks. His teacher monks were like, you know, killing is bad. Don't kill, because it's bad. Um, but he's like, he needs to kill and then he goes to this island on a midnight walk, which is actually a lion turtle. Uh, it's a creature in the show, you'll understand it. He's, he talks to all the past avatars on what he should do, and they're like, kill it. And then, basically, he talks to the lion turtle, and he's like, before you could uh, bend earth, and you could bend the matcha, you could bend people's souls or something like that. So, okay, now it's the four-part finale. Four parts. So Aang comes back, and basically, long story short, um, uh, the Fire Lord, his name is Oza, I'm not sure I've said that, he comes, and is basically like, okay, it's time to go bomb the Earth Nation. Also, I'm not a Fire Lord fan, you can be that, Azula, uh, because I'm the Phoenix King, because, you know, I'm gonna, I'm reborning myself as, like, the leader of the whole world after this. Phoenix King forever. So Azula's leader of Fire Nation, and basically what happens is Katara and Z Zuko, they go to fight um, Azula. Ta, Ka Ta um, Sokka, and um, the Yoshi girl that he they're dating now, they go to defeat the ships that are going to blow up the... Um, Earth Nation, and then Aang gets to fight the Fire Lord. I mean, they don't really fight until part four, but okay. So, what happens is, um, when, uh, Z Zuko comes right before, um, Azula's crown prince, they have an Agni Kai, and then when, um, Zuko starts to have the upper hand, she shoots lightning at Katara, Zuko jumps in the way, and then basically Katara defeats her, She's a bit unhinged right now, and like just sad and crazy and not as well because she, her friends have left her. She's she's the queen, but she doesn't have anyone she trusts anymore. So it's like she's going crazy. 
um, the Sokka and and Toph and uh, the Kyoshi Warrior, they're destroying the ships. Aang, uh, he he fights the Fire Lord and basically just steals his ability to firebend at the end from what the Turtle Man taught him. Uh, the series is over now um, with Zuko being Fire Lord because um, Iroh's like, no, that's what you should do. Also, one more thing, the White Lotus Club, which is basically... Um, this group of old people who are like, they don't, they don't believe in formations, they do believe in philosophy and just what's right. So they, um, um, they basically say, okay, you know what, let's not have, um, Bossing stay in Baden and basically unfree it because two of them are Fire Nation, or maybe three are at least Fire Avengers, so they free it from it. Um, from Fire Nation occupation. Haha, -ha, very funny. And yeah, so that's free. Um, Zuko's Fire Lord, but a good one, and friends with Aang. And then it ends with uh, all the guys together, and then Aang goes outside, and then Katara follows, and they kiss. This is fine. Just don't be an ass about it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I was saying earlier. When you're being an ass with this romance stuff, and you're like earning yourself and someone you're not, or just basically just being a bad person. I don't like that. Don't do that because it makes me not like the character as much when he's trying to get someone else to like him. And if I don't like him, maybe other people won't either. Uh, but no. The show was really good, and now let's get to the character. Basically just being a bad person. I don't like that. Don't do that because it makes me not like the character as much when he's trying to get someone else to like him. And if I don't like him, maybe other people won't either. Uh, but no. The show was really good, and now let's get to the characters. So, first of all, the main guy, Aang. Let's talk about him for a second. He, he's a good character. I mean, he really is. I really like him. I mean, he's super joyful and positive, yet he also feels, you can see that he's burdened with this responsibility. I mean, he's still a kid inside. He likes to goof off, have fun, um, and that's great. I mean, it's great. It feels, he feels like a youthful character who feels like, it's basically what the intro says. He has a lot to learn, but he, he can save the world when, if it comes to it. He's going to protect his friends. He's super powerful. But he's also a kid inside. And the crush stuff. Like I said. Normally it's fine. Just don't. I, I, I said it six seconds ago. You, you can go back and watch it. Um, Great character. Katara. I mean. She's such an interesting character to me. I mean. You'd think that. Okay. She's. She'd be such a basic character. She's a kind of love interest and also the one who takes care of the group and it is the first teacher, basically. But, I mean, she's such an interesting character. I mean, seeing her whole backstory on where she came from and her trying to learn how to waterbend, I mean, it's really interesting, even if it's simple. I mean, she's just a nice character that, I mean, you're going to like her. She, she's just nice it doesn't have too many flaws with the character. And if they do, it's pointed out, like, in the episodes where um, her and Toph fight. It's pointed out. Um, but, like, she's just someone who wants to do good. Um, at whatever cost. Like, we see in the season 3 episode where she dresses up as the painted lady. Um, Sokka. He's a comic relief character. But, I mean, he's funny most... Th he's funny a lot of the time. He can be serious a lot of the time, and, like, one of my favorite characters, like, that episode where he's learning to, um, use a sword, that's great. Uh, the season one, when he's dating, even when he's protective in the season two, uh, but when he's given bad advice, like, in the, um, in the, the fortune-telling episode, just be having jokes throughout the whole episode that aren't funny, like when he was high on cactus juice, that's not good. I mean, he but he has a really good arc from when we first see him in episode one, where he's like, I hate it, and he's like, no, I'm, he's super overconfident to like 
season three where he's he's kind of a leader of the group. He he's the one planning everything and mapping and even though like the schedule stuff wasn't funny, um, that Pink Lady episode. He's become one of the best episodes, even if every five or so he has some not funny jokes. Now to Zuko, one of the most beautifully written characters. He starts off as your basic villain. Uh, he's like that for most of season one. Then we find his backstory, and we start to care for him. And then he gets blown up by Admiral Zhao, and he's like, wow, okay. His father abandoned him. Um, this guy is attacking him for no reason. Even after just the Agni Kai, you start to respect him more. Um, and then he breaks, uh, he breaks and got out of jail. And I mean, at the end of season one, he's a really developed character and you like him. Season two, all with, uh, um, Zuko, lo Zuko alone and, um, basically his life in, uh, Bossing saying just seeing all the destruction of the Fire Lord, and then to see him still turn back to what he's wanted his whole life because he thinks that's what he wants, and basically turns on his uncle. That hurts. He's a kid because we'll talk about this when we talk about the uncle in the role. I mean, you've seen him grow so much, and you care about the uncle, but it. J you don't like him in the moment because it's like you're turning against our three main characters and normally that's fine that's how it's been for most of the season but then against the uncle the one person who throughout it all has cared for him that hurts and then when he goes back to the fire nation and realizes it's all it isn't all he wanted and basically that this isn't the life he's having he's the, he's a bad person i feel like part of the catalyst was both the meeting where it's like yeah we're gonna nuke bossing say and the rest of um, the Earth Kingdom also maybe burning down the beach place. Around there was when he started to change. And it's like, after that, he's Team Avatar. And, I mean, that was a great transformation. I mean, like, him not being able to fight in range, th that's good. It's showing that, yeah, he's changed teams, and I mean, that's a problem. But he's going to grow from it. He's... He's left immobilized for a little, but then he becomes a greater character in all his side missions. I'm glad that he's the main character for, like, the second half of season three. Because it gives him so much time to grow. And by the end of the season, he's he's one of the best characters. And I'd say he's the standout of season three. Now, Uncle Iroh. He's just, he's just a great character overall. Not much of an arc. I mean, maybe season three, but throughout, he, he, you love him in season one, and then he's a great father figure in season two, who just cares about Zuko, and then you start to really feel like, no, this is the, this character, he's just a nice guy, even though he's Fire Nation. And then season three, when he's in jail, and I mean, just that scene at the end of, um, when he meets Zuko again, and he, and he, Zuko's like, wait, you forgave me so easily, and that, that struck deep. I mean, he's one of the best characters, even though he's not that developed. I mean, yeah, his son, but I mean, he doesn't change much as a character throughout the seasons. Um, now, we could talk about all the minor characters. I mean, I guess Toph, she, yeah, she's one of them we can talk about, but then, that's it for characters. So, Toph, I mean, she, she's just an interesting character. I mean, she doesn't have much of an arc again, but I mean, she's just a great character where she's got a good, headstrong, um, like a different point of view. I mean, she's super, she's super powerful, um, and just a great character. I mean, her fighting with Katara, you can see both sides. Uh, it's not annoying. You can see both sides of the fight. Um, just... She's a great character. She's different. She's very unique for the cast. And I don't know. She's a great character. Now, I mean, Avatar as a show, it's great. But what about the movie? Well, internet people, and it's been a few hundred years since I filmed the rest of those clips. Anyway, I'm at editing. Well, I'm done editing, but I gotta put this part in. Okay, okay, y you hear me? Okay, great.
There's one thing I forgot to talk about, which was vital, is so important to the whole show that I didn't talk about, and I'm going to do that right here. The end credit music. Oh my god. It, it slapped so hard, you know? It was like... And no matter, no matter what was happening, two out of three times when watching an episode, I would be crying because it's sad. It's it's so sad. I, almost all the endings are very sad. But no matter what I'm doing, I'm drinking water. I'm eating too bad. I put that on the floor. I lay down on my bed because there's like this five second grace period. This this five second grace period before it starts, and then. I am Cream Zuko. This is normally the part as in, in yesterday where I airbend the table over here, but I'm a firebender, so I get my servants to do it for it. Servants. I know that was a really good impression I did there, but I'm not gonna do so. Water bottle's empty again. I, I promised you I filled it up last night. Um, uh, so I washed Avatar The Last Airbender. Avatar The Last Airbender, that movie. Or as it's just called, The Last Airbender. So let's talk about it. Um, I wanna forget that this movie ever happened and move on, so this is gonna be kind of quick. Okay, so. It's a movie, it's live action, basically what they did, they just took the first season of the show, condensed it down to an hour and 48 minutes, and it was very badly paced. Okay, let me go do some math. Okay, I just did some very quick math there, but uh, season one is 400 total minutes, that's six and... A third hours, um, just assuming that every episode's 20 minutes, I know they're like 25, so that's even more time. But anyways, um, the movie, it's an hour 40 minutes, hour 45, but again, let's just say it's two hours. That's condensing it into like a third of the time, and that's not including the credits, which are like 10 minutes in this. So, I mean, that's, that's hour 30, which is a fourth maybe so that that's not looking very good if you're going to adapt the whole season and though they take out some episodes um the, the main problem with this movie is just the pacing i mean the first two episodes the boy and the iceberg part one and two that's 10 minutes and you just start with everything feeling rushed and then you have like a bunch of episodes condensed into like a montage and uh, yeah, let me just talk about it. So, first of all, I was laughing from the second it started. It had the whole fire, earth, water, air thing. Except they were doing it in live action. And how it was done, it was a red cloth in the background. And someone was just doing it in front of it. It looked so bad. It's like they had five minutes left before I was going to the movie theaters. So they're like, guys, 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 let's go. Let's film this. And it, it just looked, it looked horrible. But then we get to it. And, I mean, I just think that the biggest problem is the pacing. Everything's so fast-paced. It's like they're doing one thing, and then it's okay. Here's the next thing. Um, I mean, we have a lot of Katara just narrating things that they don't want to show. So it's like, you're either going to see a scene very fast. It's like 30 seconds of talking. And then, okay, let's go do this. They do it, and then Katara narrates what happens, and then you go on to the next episode. And it, it's just a lot of that, and it just feels so rushed. Um, so you spend, like, ten minutes on episode one and two. You basically go through the whole season pretty quickly. I mean, um, probably in 50 minutes for episode three to episode 17. And then 18 through 20, that's 40 minutes. So, I mean, episode 18 through 20, it was the best paced. 
But that was about half of the movie. So you missed all of the great arcs in season one. I mean, I was checking the casting list. Apparently Jet was in this. I mean, yeah, looking back, it's I, I don't remember where that happened exactly. I mean, yeah, it was just not that very well paced. I mean, it's one the pro another problem was even though it was super fast paced, the bending, it felt super slow. I mean, you just to move butter from here to you would probably take like a second. You can dodge that and even though the people in the movie don't. And to airbend, it's like, you need to stand up and like do it for five seconds just to blow something over. And it, it makes it feel really slow, even though it's fast-paced. And I mean, if it's all fast-paced, that's fine. You can work with it. But then when you have the fighting feel really slow, it's not that great. The tone of this, I mean, it was serious the whole time. I don't think I heard one joke. I mean, it was, it was just normal action movie and I mean it didn't have any personality really it's just a boring copy without the life in it I mean let's talk about some good things first I mean I'm not doing this to be like there's nothing good about it there were a few good things I mean I watched part of this tonight part of this this morning and uh when Aang was captured um, to be rescued by the blue spirit thing, um, for that scene, I mean, how he was captured is he went to the Northern Air Temple without his friends, which, how he got there, I, I don't like, but um, he, was, he was talking to this guy, yeah, uh, he basically sold Aang over to the Fire Nation, and he's like, you seem like a nice man, but you haven't been here and it's like you really see the guilt that he should have and it's not just guilt put on him but in being sold i mean i don't really feel like we saw much of that besides that one fishing episode with the guy actually um those episodes were close together the one where that happened but i mean i think that was handled well i wrote he, he was good in this um but basically quickly the finale because that's how it happened um, the finale, it was fine. I mean, most of it, it's just like the show a bit slower. Uh, I don't have too many complaints with the ending. Um, one more good thing was like how, um, when Aang ran away, it wasn't just because he found out that he'd be the Avatar, but like he was running away when he was about to be crowned the Avatar. I mean, I liked that. I'm not just going to say this is the worst thing ever. I mean, because the Miss Peregrine's Home for Children movie, uh, that exists, so that, that's the worst thing ever. So I just want to make that clear. But no, the finale is fine, and I mean, here's the thing. If you want to find out the first season of Avatar, go watch the first season of Avatar. I mean, that's my biggest problem. It does, if you're going to do this adaptation style thing, whether it's a just transforming the TV show to live action or to a movie. You gotta add something to the story. And when I say add something, I don't mean change the story and mold it to fit um, whatever your vision is. You add on to the story um, that fits the vision. Um, one of the greatest examples of this is the series of Unfortunate Events TV show. It added a lot with all, seeing a bunch of like BF EFD, and I mean, that added a whole lot to the story. It didn't subtract, it didn't just rewrite something, change a scene to fit the director's vision. It adds on top of what the writer intended. It feels like, yeah, this, this could have been happening in the book universe. But here it's just like, okay, here's the same story and we're going to change a few things so it fits with our vision and make it a bit faster. Um... Since we're talking about changing things, one of the weirdest things was that um, they were le going town to town leading a rebellion. I never understood that, and like they were winning basically all the way up to the Northern Water Tribe, freeing all the small villages, leading a rebellion. But I mean, I, I feel like for the most part they were 
losing and just running away. I mean, maybe that's more of season two, season three, but I mean, I don't feel it was this victorious. It's like, okay, we're happy because we live. And here's like, no, we're leading a rebellion. We're freeing everyone. Zuko's just following them. Now, the weirdest thing by far is that um, how firebending works. You need to find a source of fire to be able to, like, create your own fire. So, like, you need to have a campfire or just a torch going so you can firebend because you t take the power from whatever the source of fire is. It's not like you make your own. And so in some it just means, yeah, you can make your own. And that just feels so weird, and it's like, of all the things you can change, why that? One last thing is that there's one thing I really don't like, and that is, in the movie, um, something that's happening is like, Aang shouldn't be killing people. That's like, as the Avatar, you shouldn't be killing people. And I don't understand that, because... Um, maybe I just didn't watch the finale of, uh, the show correctly, but I'm pretty sure those whole four episodes, Aang's biggest problem was like, I need to feed him. That's my job as the Avatar. I need to keep the peace. But I don't want to kill him because it goes against all my beliefs that killing is bad. But by not killing him... You're letting the terror ensue, and just, he needs to balance, um, his spiritual needs, as in, like, yeah, I don't kill people, and his avatar duty of keeping the peace. All the past avatars, they'll kill to keep the peace, and that's part of the job. You'll kill to keep the peace. You'll give up, um, some of the things you'd like to do, because you're the avatar. Now, yes, you can't have a family. You can't, like, I mean... Roku, he had a wife and kids, apparently, because, um, like, the mother was Roku's daughter or granddaughter, something like that. You can't have family, but you gotta put your avatar duties ahead of what you'd like in life. So, I mean, you will keep all people, but if you don't need to, you shouldn't. I mean, if Aang needed to kill people there, which, I mean, if... He could have done that to save the koi fish. I mean, he should have, but that's also in the show. But it's like, it's not, you should be, sh you're not, you're the avatar. You can't kill people. And this one thing I don't like about just adaptations, you can change stuff. You can add all the stuff you want as long as it fits in the story. But then when you're just bending in the story to fit your director goals, that I don't like that. I mean... You can add stuff if it's going to fit with the creator's vision, feels like it could be a part of their world, sure. But if you're just completely rewriting it because it doesn't fit with the story you're trying to tell, go make your own story. And I'm going to leave you on that. But, okay, some quick theories. And just, okay. If you want to watch this movie, just rewatch season one of this show. I mean, I need to re-record this last part, so it's going to be quick and a bit all over the place, but I'm just trying to say that. Um, one last thing, my Legends of Korra predictions, I know it takes place after this show, so I'm, I mean, I have to assume she's the next Avatar. i just love to see what they do in a later time period, whether she's alive or not. Sounds like a notification, which sounds like I'm out of storage, so, bye. Uh, until later. Part of the video where I say something about some other stuff, but there's there's never a chance to. Don't worry, don't worry, guys. It, it, it's me, it's me, Gabe the Builder, and I watched Legend of Korra, and today I'm going to talk about it. So yeah, uh, last week after I filmed my uh, last Airbender video, I watched the show that night. And then, that was last week, and now it's Thursday, and I'm done. So I finished it in a week and two days. So, yeah, let's talk about it. Um, it's hard to breathe in, breathe in this. Um, okay, season one. This is fine, right? We see Korra, basically, just she, so she passes her test, and now she moves to Republic City to start her training. 
Now, Republic City is a city built by Fire Lord Zuko and Avatar Aang. And he gets there, and the first thing she sees is, like, she sees this triad dude um, just robbing some poor people. She sees this riot per, um, by anti-benders. Anti and then she meets the chief of police, Lin Beisong, uh, who is the daughter of Toph. Um, she's the chief of police, and then at the end of the episode, she basically, um, uh, decides to live with the son of Aang, Chief Tenzin, voiced by J.K. Simmons. Um, and that's the first episode. Um, in the next episode, she goes to, um, this, uh, pro-bender match, which is basically, like, um, fighting. It's not like the WWE thing in the first, uh, in Avatar it's more like just professional fighting, and she sneaks into the um, ring, and she meets the this guy. His name is uh, Bolin, and then he meet, and then Bolin has a brother named Mako. They're on a fighting team, and they're bender for so pro bending. You've got two teams. With an earthbender, a firebender, and a waterbender, they're down a waterbender, so I'm not sure in this match or later on in the episode, but at some point, uh, she be she subs in for them and starts fighting with the team. So she becomes a part of the team now, um, and now they're in the qualif they're going to go to the championship match, but they need money to do that. So Bolin, Maku goes to a factory to try to get some money, and then Bolin, he's playing around with his his ferret, his fire ferret, their team, their pro-bending team is called fire ferret, named Pabo. But then one, a guy from the triad they used to work for comes and gives him money if they do a job with him. But Bolin gets captured um, by some anti-benders. Uh, they are, these guys are chi blockers. So if you remember Tai Lee from the first um, show, then it, basically they can do that. So Mako and Korra, who is the Avatar, again, they go to stop it. They go to this um, rally by the main uh, anti-bender guy, whose name is Amon. He, he looks like this, except probably better and not wearing the logo of my middle school, my former middle school, I should say. And... Yeah, it's, he takes away someone's bending, which we thought only the Avatar could do at this point. So it's really scary, but they break Bolin out. Um, so she's, uh, Korra's having a hard time with her training. Uh, but let's kind of skip past that. Um, the guy, um, Amon, he threatens the finale of the pro bending tournament. He says he'll, like, do bad stuff if they fight it because it's like you're supporting dumb benders. Um, and, okay, so here's the government in Republic City right now. You have a council of, like, representatives for each nation. You've got one for the Air Nation, as in Tenzin. You have one for the Water, Tonrak, and then two other guys who basically are yes men to Tonrak. So Tom Rack starts this council to look for Amon. He forces Korra to join. Well, not forces, but kind of makes her do it by um, getting in a spot publicly where she needs to, basically. And um, it doesn't really work out, so she starts investigations on her own. Mako runs into this girl. Uh, well, the girl runs into him on a bike, and they crash. But, um, she's like, oh, sorry, and Mako ha thinks she looks cute, and they go on a date, and she helps to get the money for the team to get to the finale, and, yeah, so the, uh, like, the, the finale of the boxing thing. So the pro-bending finale is happening, and then, basically, Tonrak wants the chief of police, Lynn, to basically say she'll do it, and then when it just so if it goes bad, he can blame her, and then it doesn't work because um, Amon, he breaks in and, like, takes away the guy that, um, that Korra's team is fighting with powers because they're, they're cheaters, 
And yeah, so they get away, but now Lynn is friends with Corey, but because at the start they weren't. Okay. So now basically things are getting worse. Um Cora's hanging out more with the um the girlfriend of Mako. She was thinks that the dad of the girl is part of the anti bending people. So she investigates and it turns out that yeah, he is. He's been building these super high tech mechs for him. But at the end of the episode, uh, he gets away, but they find out what's going on. Um, the Tom Rat guy, uh, he's starting to take more drastic measures. Um, he's been in this for, uh, for power from day one, basically. But um, uh, he shuts down this whole street of the non-vendor community's power. And then they were rioting about that, and then he starts arresting them. Well, not rioting, just protesting, because he turned off their power for no good reason. And then, uh, when Avatar tries to stop him, he arrests Korra's friends, and then Korra goes to talk to him at his place in private, but, and then basically they start fighting, and he starts bloodbending, which is now illegal, um, and it's not a full moon, which is one of the requirements. The only person who could do that before was, like, this master villain who Aang took the powers from, and this wasn't a show, this is a flashback, um, and we see the trial of this guy, and one of the best parts of this, and the show, was we see Sokka leading the court, now that he's older, and it was just my, one of the favorite scenes of the show, is, like, Sokka's like, huh, we can, vendors can do a lot of things, I once saw a guy shoot laser beams out of his head, and I took it out with my trusty boomerang. And that was just a great scene. Um, but yeah, it's the son of the guy who can bend on the full moon. And then that guy basically takes Korra, kidnaps her, but then Amon tracks him down, and he uh, takes the power of that guy. And then Tarlac realizes that the guy who's Amon and can take people's powers, it's his brother, who is a bender. Okay. But now, Amon's basically um, launching a full-scale war against Republic City, and um, Korra goes to try to stop him, and gets her power taken away, but uh, she can, she since she hasn't mastered wind, when she does master it, she gets her power through that, and fights against Amon and reveals him as a bender, so he basically gets his power taken away, but him and Tarlac, they run away, but Tarlock, he's like, no, we won't rebuild life for himself, and basically blows up the ship to kill Amon. One more thing I didn't mention, but I mean, it'll be important for this season two, was that while um, Mako was dating the girl, he, at one point, he liked, he also kind of liked um, Korra, and they kissed at one point, and Korra liked him, and Bolin liked Korra, and yeah, it, it was a, it was weird, but this kiss scene, it wasn't like the one in season three, episode 17, which was completely horrible, and I hated it, um, it felt right in the story, and I mean, there were consequences for it later on, but at the end of the season, uh, he breaks up with the girlfriend, starts dating Korra, Korra gets her powers back, and yeah, that's the season. Now, I'm going to take this off for my season thoughts. So, what's my thoughts on season one? This is a good season. It was really strong. I mean, the whole anti-bender thing, I think, is something really interesting because, you know, through the Hundred Year War, you see uh, benders as, like, powerful. They can, they're either your most your worst enemy or your most respected leader, but without the war going on and your benders protecting you, and you just live in this city where, I mean, benders and non-benders live in peace, but then, you know, the benders, they're going to abuse their power. You can see why there's the anti-bending sentiment, um, be, but there aren't all bad benders, and it's like, it's this um, interesting ideology and, like, just thoughts that I think were explored well, and I'd love to see explored more. 
this was a great way to show us a bridge between the show and basically just him rebuilding the world without seeing him rebuilding the world. It was ha it was what happened after he rebuilt the world and after he de died. How it started to slowly turn to chaos. Um, because, you know, the Avatar was a child and couldn't keep peace for 15 years because she was kept off at a training facility, even though we realized she sh that should have happened or for her protection. So it was a really good show, great introduction to the characters, and uh, I am going to uh, uh, look up the name of the girl. I know her last name was Sato, but I forgot it, so I'm going to look that up right now. Her name was Asami, and I will probably remember that now. But, okay, let's get on to Season 2. Now, Season 2 had a rough start, in my opinion. Um, the festivals, they, it was fine, but, um, yeah. Uh, Unalak, who was the leader of the Northern Water Tribe, I don't know if it was, yeah, Northern Water Tribe, uh, he, I mean, his daughters, they, I didn't like them at all. Um, and Bolin had a crush on the daughter. And, yeah, so the first episode, some spirits are attacking, and, yeah. So, Korra goes on an expedition with Unalak, the leader, and they go to this place to open a spirit portal, because uh, the spirit portals, um, to keep the spirits calm, he said, and they do that, and now they head back. And uh, Unalak is now basically taking control of the Southern Water Tribe by force. Um, and uh, Korra's father, who's the leader of the Southern Water Tribe, uh, he was originally kicked out from the Northern Water Tribe. And yeah. Anyways, so uh, they're having a fight. And yeah, so Unalak's completely taken over this place. Um, one of the people important in the Southern Water Tribe, his name is Varric of Varric Industries. He's a great funny character, but yeah, he's going back to New Re yeah, Republic City um, with the Avatar gang to, um, to warn the president and get them to send forces, but that isn't working, and some um, people are attacking... Uh, like Southern Water Tribe buildings and shipments going to the Southern Water Tribe. So, um, people are think just saying it's Southern Water Tribe, but Mako, who's on the police now, doesn't think so. Um, Korra goes away to do something. I don't remember what she was going to go do, but she gets, um, attacked by a uh, spirit, and then the sisters, the daughters of, the children of Unala come after her, and they think she's dead, because, yeah, but she washes up on this fire temple island, where these fire sages, and apparently one of them's Azula, I didn't, I didn't notice that, I don't think they said it was Azula, I'm not sure if it's a fan theory, but just on the internet, I was looking at all the characters, one, of, apparently one of them's Azula, but, um, to, um, Korra, basically, in a two-part story, p learns about the first Avatar Wan and how he gets his powers, how, um, there's the light and dark spirit, one of them's Raba, who's inside the Avatar, and one of them... Oh, Vatu. Okay, the evil guy is named Vatu. Um, uh, and this, like, kind of solstice thing where the moon's aligned, uh, I think it's called, like, I... Temporal eclipse or something like that. But when that happens, if the two portals are open, then Vatu will escape. And Unalak, who's evil, uh, finds um, Korra and forces her to open the two portals. Um, okay, so Tenzin, he has three children. One of them is Milo. One of them is Janor, and one of them's not important. Or I just forgot her name, but she doesn't really do anything. So, um, Janora, she's really in tune with the spirits, so she's helping, um, Korra go through the spirit world. But she gets captured and basically used as bartering to make to Korra open the portal, so she's, she's forced to do that. And then, uh, 
Uh, Janora's taken anyways. Um, also, uh, Tenzin has two siblings. One of them is Boomy, and one of them is a waterbender, but again, not important her name. I'll, I'll work on that in the characters part. But yeah, so all of them are going to try to attack the portals and get in for the eclipse thingy. And they basically to do, uh, long story short, but Janora's running out of time. So Tenzin and a few others go into the spirit world through the spirit portal. And Korra's fighting um, Unalak to basically just try to keep Batu in. But Batu breaks out and merges with Unalak, making a dark avatar. And they get, they take um, the, the Rava out of Korra, so basically she loses her avatar power and her connection to all of the past avatars. But, um, she meditates and then turns into a big spirit monster and fights Unalak as the dark avatar. And with the help of Janor's spirits, they defeat him. And, uh, she gets her connection to Rava back, and, but not her connection to the past avatars. And, yeah, that's the season. Uh, it started a bit rocky. Oh, also, Varric was the one who was destroying all the, and all the Southern Water Tribe stuff to get money from war. Um, Bolin was an actor making movies for Varric to, like, try to get them to go to war, because he basically just wanted them to go to war, so you can make war profits, war profiteering, that's where I'm at. But, yeah, what are my thoughts? It started off a bit rocky, but it, in the end, once, especially once you got to that episode with Azula, allegedly, and Katara, I keep wanting to call her Katara, uh, she's in this, but, yeah. Um, when we get to Korra doing her, um, learning about the first Avatar, who's in this one, that's when it started to get really good. So it went from being, it was a step down at the start, but then it was so much better somehow. Just like the story of Wong, that was really good. Um, and yeah, there was one more thing that I probably forgot. Oh yeah, so Janora and... Uh, Korra, they were exploring the spirit world for some reason, I don't remember why. But anyways, they get separated, and Korra meets Ayako. So someone please tell me, because in this end of season three, uh, it sounded like they had a new voice actor when we saw him those one or two times. And then when here, it was definitely a different actor. And I'm not sure if the original one died or what, because... I mean, I don't know, but the original voice actor was so much better. He had so much life in his performance, and I mean, this new guy, he's fine, but a lot of the time it just sounds dull and lifeless and boring, so... Yeah, Uncle Iroh, he's in this, but... Yeah, that's sad. Also, one more thing. Back, 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 backtrack to season one. Uh, to help fight, there was this general. His name was General Iroh. I believe he was the son of Fire Lord Zuko. And he used the original same voice actor as the uh, as Zuko, so I liked that. But okay, season two really good, really liked it, but not the best start. I mean, Varric he was good at the start. I didn't like his whole evil thing because he he really did seem evil. And then and well, we'll see when I explain it to you. So at the start of season three, um, some people are getting uh oh. One more thing. From at the end of season two, um, Korra decided to leave open the spirit portal so that spirits and humans could live together in peace. But yeah, uh, so now that spirit portals are open, random people are getting bending. One of them is this bad guy. So this guy's a here. He gets bending. He's this leader of a group who tried to kidnap Katara as a ch child, and basically their whole deal is. They they believe that chaos is order, and that um, opening the spirit portals was a good thing, and that basically there should be no Avatar, because she's trying to bring order to the world, and the real order is chaos. So, 
the story it has two main goals. One is um, trying to remake the Air Nation. So it uh, it starts with Tin, Tin, Korra and Tenzin gathering air nomads, and they need to go to Ba Sing Se, where we see another leader who is corrupt and mean. And I'm not sure if they're trying to make us hate Ba Sing Se, but I mean, it seems interesting, but I've always kind of hated it there. Not like it's bad, but it's like, uh, I'm tired of these corrupt leaders in Ba Sing Se. And I don't know, it just doesn't feel that fun. But yeah, the we find out that there's the Earth Queen there now, and she's corrupt. But anyways, she was torn some air nomads, but now Tenzin goes to start the temple, and Korra keeps going on her own to find them, and finds out that Zahir breaks out his friends, who also were there trying to kidnap Korra, and they need to find refuge, so they hear that there's this one new uh, airbender, so they go there to the city of metal. That, um, that's what I'm calling it, the city of metal. I think it starts with an A. But again, it doesn't matter. So they go there, and that's where Lin's sister is. They have a lot of problems as kids, so it's like two episodes to them trying to fix their problems. Uh, the airbender is one of uh, the daughter of the sister of Lin's daughters, and she's an airbender, and her and Bolin, they, uh, they become boyfriend and girlfriend by the end, but, oh, I should just say they started dating, um, but Zaheer, he attacks this place and almost takes Korra, but he doesn't because one of the people in the metal city was a traitor, and they track him down, and basically, uh, she talks to Zaheer in the spirit world, but while she's meditating, she gets, um, Bolin and Ma Mako, that's they get captured by Zahir's people, and while Asami, that's her name, uh, they get captured by the Earth Queen. Also, at the end of Season 2, uh, Mako and Korra broke up, just, just so you know. So, no one is currently dating except Bolin. But, yeah, they get captured, sent to the Earth Queen, but Zahir goes to the Earth Queen, and based uh, with the prisoners of Mako and Bolin, and basically says, if you give me the, um, the Avatar, you guys get them. And no one needs to know that the Avatar was here and we won't wreck you out and the world won't attack you. But then he kills the Earth Queen when Korra, basically her blimp crashes in the desert. So Korra and Asami, they built this sand bent dune to get out there. And we see Zuko for the first time in the season riding a dragon. That was cool. He's part of the White Lotus. And the White Lotus has been the one protecting the Avatar the whole time in charge of her training. And basically the reason she was caged up as a child was because that these bad guys, led by Zaheer, tried to kidnap her. So they locked her up so she wouldn't be. Um, and this anti-group was called the Red Lotus because um, they think that the White Lotus has become corrupted and basically just not following the ideals of the um what the white lotus should have so now the red lotus is what they think that the white lotus should have been anyways the here he goes to the air temple where tenzin's trading all the people boomy has powers now by the way and he basically captures them all and uh he tells the avatar that if she doesn't surrender herself that um He's going to kill all the air people, and basically she does enter herself, but then they find out that the air people, they still aren't safe. And, uh, yeah, so the the Red Lotus, they're going to try to kill her and the Avatar forever. So they give her this potion, this poison, so she gets into the Avatar state, uh, but then they're going to kill her while she's in the Avatar state. So then Avatar dies, as we learned in the first show after the last airbender but basically she gets out but um she has this poison in her and she gets very weakened and loses her power um the daughter of um tenzin janora she gets her um airbender cast because she's a master now and yeah that's the end of season three the change one so season
season three. I I love it so much. Zakir again, another great villain. Um, her losing her powers. Uh, I'll talk about that in a little. Um, mainly when we get to uh the full season, the full show thoughts. But I mean, it was a really good show. Seeing the adjustment to living with spirits. And just the whole other ideology by Zaheer, um, the Earth Nation being thrown in chaos. And, I mean, this one really sets up season four good. And, you know, it was a great season seeing the Metal Bender City, seeing Lynn's sister. It was all great. Now, we are on to season four. Now, it starts with, um, there's like a three-year time jump, by the way. So, Bolin and Varric are working with this, um, girl who used to be, um, Sue, the sister of Lin's, um, personal guard, but then when the Sue didn't take the power, um, and try to fix the Earth Kingdom, she quit, takes, um, the son of Sue, um, on her team, a bunch of, uh, the Sioux City, which, uh, that's the, what we're calling Metal City, Sioux City, um, takes a bunch of the guards and goes to start this revolution. She um, conquers Ba Sing Se. And then the leaders of the world basically say, okay, you you do this, but when the time comes, you give your power to um, the prince. Or at that time, he'll be the king. So she does that, but then they're on one of the last cities. Um, and at first, it's being saved by the Air Acolytes, which is the name of the Air Nomads now. And, uh, it's the daughter of Sue and some other guy who we meet in season three. He's a, he's a, he's a big unit character, but, I mean, he's not important here. Anyways, um, what's happening is, basically, the girl, uh, comes with the train and Bolin and all those people. And, basically, tries to conquer the city. Basically, she says, oh, no, yeah, we'll be on your side. But then it was also, like... Um, we'll conquer you if you don't do this, and, like, she, she'll do whatever she wants to get her way, I mean, yeah, it's hard to explain, but it really isn't that complicated. Okay, so, now it's the prince, he's about to get crowned as, uh, the king of the Earth Nation, but, um, first of all, the, the girl in charge, uh, uh, or the Great Uniter, they call her... Um, basically, she, uh, won't give the power, so he's basically powerless. But anyways, Cora was supposed to come with his father, her father, but the father said she was supposed to come to Republic City six months ago. So basically, she's lost. Um, we see this flashback of her trying to get her powers, but we'll just quickly skip past that. She finds her way into, um, the spirit, the, the swamp from the first show, where she meets Toph and basically gets a bit of help from her. Gets a bit, she realizes there's a bit more poison in her. But um, the daughters of Tenzin go looking for Korra and they find her and bring her back. But Korra goes to Metal City because the um, the great um, uniter, she is trying to take over Metal City. And long story short, Korra doesn't have the power to stop her. Um, the mother... All of the family besides the one that's Earth, that's Air Nation, they get kidnapped, and Metal City's taken over. But Bolin and Varric realize that, oh wait, the Great Uniter's bad, and they run away. Okay, so now, um, we see Mako's the bodyguard of the Prince guy, the King guy, and now, now that Korra's back, I mean, a lot of the leaders, um, like the President, and even kind of Tenzin, don't think she has much power, and she's hanging out, and that makes her mad, um, and she's hanging out with Sami and Mako, and of course the prince, but the prince gets kidnapped, so they go save him, uh, but he was with Varric, he was working on this the device that harvests power from spirit vines, um, but he realized it's too dangerous and too powerful for anyone to be able to use, so that's kind of why he runs away. But they still do it, and the Great Uniter, she's taken vines from the spirit tree in, in the uh, swamp, and that's not good. But, um, to make a big weapon, a big cannon. 
so um, it's making the vines all over mad. And um, Korra, she needs to go into the Avatar state because Jinora was also captured besides the other Air Acolyte. Um, but to do that, but she can't do that right now because she's still having this block, even though she doesn't have her power. So she decides to go meet. She's like, yeah, now we have an even bigger dictator thanks to you. Uh, and he's like, okay, I'll help you. So he teaches her how to go into the spirit realm. And then, yeah, so now she's finally whole because she's not scared of him anymore, which was what was holding him her back. Um... Uh, the air acolyte daughter of Sue and Lynn, and also Bolin, they go on a secret operation to rescue their family, and they're joined by Toph, and they go there. Also, Julie, who's been very Barrack's assistant, um, pretended to be on the other team so she wouldn't get captured and try to escape Barrack. So she's there right now, and she's trying to sabotage this machine by the spirit vines, but then she gets captured and sent over there, so they save the family, and then they save Julie, but then the cannon's now operational. Julie hears that they're going, um, that the Great Uniter is going to attack, um, the Republic City soon, so, and two weeks, actually. So they go back and start preparing for war, but she, um, she starts attacking even sooner in, like, only one week. So they're trying to evacuate citizens, and Korra's trying to get the help of spirits, but the spirits say no. Uh, and um, uh, Asami and Varric are trying to make these mechs that fly, and yeah, but yeah, she's attacking early, and she has this whole mech walker, which has a cannon on its arm, and everything is going super bad. And there's like three or four episodes of them trying to fight it, but basically they cut into it after a long time. And, um, they destroy it, but then the Great Uniter, she comes and starts fighting Korra, and the cannon's cut off, but it's still operational, so she fires it at Korra because Korra's following her, and it makes a big enough blast that there's a new spirit portal now in Republic City, and her and, um, Korra talk, but Korra protects her when it's, like, the big blow-up's happening, and she's like, oh, wait, he, you protect me after all I've done? And then uh, she gets arrested, not Korra, the other girl. The Earth Empire is, um, it gets, uh, the king, he's like, I don't want to be king. I feel like there should be an elected leader and get rid of the monarchy. Um, but yeah, and that's the end of the show. Um, and basically Asami and Korra, they go into the spirit realm together on an adventure and, uh, it kind of seems like they, they're, they're gonna kiss, but then it turns black. So, season four was absolutely incredible. One of the best things I've ever seen. The whole Great Uniter stuff, the Varric, um, the Korra, I mean, that ending, mwah, mwah, that, that, cause that's what they're gonna do. Um, I mean, the fight, it, it was a little slow at times. I watched all this morning to get ready for the video because I couldn't finish it last night. But it, if you look back, it was fantastic seeing Toph here, uh, Korra having her block for the first, like, six or seven episodes. It happened more than I thought. Um, now, there was this one episode, which kind of frustrates me. They had another episode of, okay, so here's what happened in the past three seasons. And I'm like, I just watched the past three seasons in a week. I know what happened. And it's like, at first I thought the play episode was just filler, but now I'm just thinking, since they did it here, they just, they're just they just going to do that at the end of all the Avatar shows. So that live action one, get ready for the one where, um, I don't know, Aang goes into the spirit realm and... He goes to the Tree of Time, and he needs to meditate, and he's, well, Baku just doesn't need to, but the, just stay with me, and he, no, he's on court for being the Avatar, and he needs to explain everything he's done. That's going to happen in the live action show. You heard it here, folks. But, you know, season four, very good. Let's talk about the characters. Okay, so the characters of the show. First of all, Korra. She's a she's a great main character. I mean, 
the love stuff in season one. It wasn't annoying. It wasn't. It was more confusing. I mean, her art. I didn't like how she lost her power in season one just to get it back. I much rather what they did some like they did in season four. But I mean, yeah. Uh, Janora, she was a good one. I mean, she was. She's the my favorite of the daughters because she's not completely obnoxious. Asami, you'd think, at first I thought she was going to be a villain. All um, her dad was, it's like, this was some plan by the equalist to kidnap someone. But no, she turned out to be a nice, good character. Amon, um, this is an interesting character. I mean, I feel like I would have liked him better if I didn't know his backstory. I mean, I think just him being uh, just the leader would have been better. I mean... That's my one thing, that he's just this evil bloodbender guy. I, I didn't like that, and he was faking it. Uh, Azula, I mean, is she even really in this? Who knows? Uh, Mako, he, he's a really good character. I mean, I, season three, when he wasn't really sure about him and Korra and Asami and them all being together, I mean, that was funny, but also, I don't know, it didn't... It wasn't the best, but I mean, he's a good character. I mean, yeah, his and him in season one, and she, he's just a good, strong, all-around character. Uh, Bolin, he's funny, he's nice, he's cool. I mean, he, he's Bolin. He's he's cool. Tenzin, I mean, he's good. I mean, most of the characters besides Eska, Milo. Oh my God, he is the absolute worst character. Milo, more like. Please, no, please, please, why did you put him in the show? He's annoying. He's obnoxious. Get him off my screen. I don't like him. But, I mean, uh, let's just get to Varric. Uh, when he, like I said, when he was a villain, uh-uh. But, um, the rest, he, he's just a good character. I mean, yeah, most of the other characters are minor-ish. Um, uh... I mean, I liked Prince Wu. I mean, I thought he'd just be obnoxious, but he actually turns into a good character. Um, President Raiko, I mean, I'm not sure if he was just... He keeps changing from, like, being... No, I'm with the Avatar. No, I'm, I'm completely against her. And, yeah, I didn't understand that, but Desmond S. I mean, yeah, I don't hate them at the end of the season, but, I mean, at the start, they didn't like them. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's just take off the mask and talk about my full thoughts on this show. Now, as compared to Avatar The Last Airbender, th that's a hard one because, I mean, they, there's completely different ones, more nomadic, ones more in the one place. I mean, they're completely different timelines, but I just love this show so much because it adds so much to the original show. After watching the original show, I had so many questions, and this just adds so many, adds so much to the original show. It answers questions, and it just completely builds on the universe. Uh, it adds great characters, seeing the rebuild of the Air Nation, or what's just happening to the world after this. Um, like, for example, in Season 4, we see the current uh, Fire Lord, who's uh, the daughter, I think, and basically, she's like, no, we're not just going to go fight in this war if we don't have to. We've been in too many pointless wars throughout history. If we, we, if we don't need to do this, we're not going to do this. And, I mean, like that. That was really good. Um, and seeing all these villains who have different ideologies. And, like, in season four in the flashback episode, I think. Uh, it's like, yeah, they have all these different ideologies taken to the extreme, but... They're right, and it was nice not just to see one big evil villain that you don't see till the last episode, because, I don't know, it just felt so much more different. I can't say which one's better, but I will say I love this one so much, just with its hair. It's really good. If you've seen Avatar, you need to go watch Legends of Korra right now. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think this video is going to be, this part's going to be as long as Avatar part, but... It's really good. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for the video. I'll probably make a separate video talking about the future because I'm watching my Stranger Things for and me talking about the future. That wasn't that interesting part. 
So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, I, I hope you watch the shows. I'm, I probably put in a spoiler alert, so if you didn't do that, no, I mean, if I spoiled the movie for you, that's fine. If you already watched the shows, they would probably be spoiled. But, no. Thanks for watching. What do you think about these shows? Was I right? Was I wrong? Is there anything else I should watch? Let me know. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Subscribe, 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 subscribe